All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Today is going to be the first time that we're going to be talking about my my full review, my interpretation, what I thought about an anime from the 2022 summer season. Today wrapped up my isekai life. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world, namely the show right here made a little PowerPoint presentation and I felt like it would help me better express various things. I'm going to do this for each, each series. It's going to have its own cute little PowerPoint presentation. Very simple, but still going to be something that occurs, right? Okay. So, this is the show. It's got this uh, guy, Yuji, who is a tamer who gets, like, sent to another world and, uh, gets the tamer class, but then also picks up the sage class and basically goes around doing magic and saving the world with his slimes, essentially, right? All right, moving on. My overall opinion here. Honestly, I think the show was pretty meh, right? It, it didn't really do anything for me. There were various things I didn't like. It had a couple of good points, don't get me wrong. But I also read the manga, and that kind of, since I knew it was coming, and I knew how the show usually is supposed to progress, it sort of made me realize that, oh, hey, perhaps, perhaps, something's going wrong here, right? <clears throat> so, overall, I didn't like it too much. But let's talk about why I didn't like it too much, shall we? Well, let's talk about the stuff I enjoyed first of all, and then we'll get into the stuff I didn't like, and et cetera, et cetera, from there, right? So, stuff I enjoyed was that the combat, basically him casting spells, fighting monsters, that stuff was okay. It wasn't the greatest, or like most, like flashy, or hype, or anything like that. It was like huge spells, or fireballs, for the most part it was fireballs being used. Sometimes he would use ice magic, or like buffing magic, like that, but it was mainly fireballs that he was firing off like 90% of the time. Um, the slimes were cool. They were cute, and their whole like uh, gimmick of always being hungry was very nice as well. The magic looked cool, essentially, uh, when it was used. Uh, when it wasn't just fireballs being thrown, it was pretty cool. But that's some stuff I enjoyed. Now we can move on to the stuff I, I didn't like. And as you can see, already... There's a lot more here. <clears throat> so the way they presented the story, I, I didn't really like it. Um, in the first episode, they started it off like chapters from the manga into the story, right? Um, they started by having like a siege to the first town he gets to of like monsters getting ready to like attack the town. And so he was part of the defense that helped it, right? Uh, so it was just kind of like you're, you're thrown into this world with like very little context of what's happening, and they try to give you some information through these flashbacks, but the flashbacks don't give you like enough. They give you like a little bit, and then there's some flashbacks that are just unnecessary to the show uh, that they're presenting, the story that they're presenting to you. Um, like some of them are completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Uh, these particular things, like uh, meeting meeting Proud Wolf, for example. Um, in the overall context, doesn't matter uh, for this at all because they they even did Proud Wolf dirty, which is the next bullet point here. The way they depicted Proud Wolf is a travesty. They did not make him cowardly enough. Now, in the manga, he's depicted as um, a wolf who's like very cowardly. He always wants to run anytime there's a fight, anything like that, right? Um, and yet, in the show... He seems more than willing and way less complainy than he did in the manga. Because in the anime, he's all like, okay, I'll listen to your order and do this. But in the manga, he's like, uh, do I have to do that? Uh, I'd rather just run away. And then he gets roped into it through talking and stuff like that. Uh, one other thing that was really weird is during like dialogue scenes and stuff like that, they'd be playing music. Sometimes that can be good. It can add a little bit of stuff. But if you're having like a guitar rift playing uh, while like people are talking and you don't like 
lower the music value. So like the, the audio is obviously higher, you know, like it, let's say uh, it's like this transitionary scene moving over the background of a forest, uh, like a loud guitar rift kind of thing going on, right? And then they start talking. Normally I feel what happens is they kind of make the dialogue or not the dialogue, the music kind of peter down, like get quiet subtly, right? It didn't feel like that happened here. It just felt weird and out of place at times. Like I said, especially when there's like people who are talking um, and like when they're really trying to make the scene feel tense, uh, they add music. And I feel like it would have been a lot better if they would have just left off a lot of the music that they used at certain places. There were other places where they didn't use music at all, where it could have worked. And that was weird to me. Um, the way it ended also blew me away. And this one sort of comes into the fact that it's skipping a lot of content because the, the manga has very specific things that happen in order, right? And after this specific town that he goes to in the manga, and up until then everything was like kind of pretty much linear, right? Except for the flashbacks. Uh, after that, they have to like jump ahead way, way, way far. Uh, it, it, I don't know if maybe the, the light novels arranged differently or what they did, or if they were just like, let's just skip to the end of the light novel and use that as the ending for the anime, which I think they did. Because the way it ended, it felt like the ending of the series. Like the, the, the final fight and like the, the, the climax of the anime series felt like how... The anime, or not how the anime, how the how the manga or the light novel would have ended, because it's a really grandois or grandois or however you pronounce that. You have, uh, it's a very grand fight, and like very high stakes, and there's like multiple cities and stuff involved in what happens at the end, and it, it just feels like they decided to end that there for some reason. But then after that, they go back to where they deviated from where the manga like splits so they could imply like hey there could be a second season um <clears throat> and that's weird because they go they go to the town that literally would have been next after they branched from where the manga left so it's it's really weird because they introduce a couple of characters in like the final climax that you don't even know about in the manga I don't think and so it kind of just well, it was a huge bunch of stuff, first of all, for a manga reader like me who didn't read the light novel. Um, so it's just kind of weird seeing all that happen in that order. And as for skipping a lot of content, there was uh, basically a whole bunch of like new spells that he gets, um, leveling various things up, uh, learning about his spells, getting new monsters. A lot of the slime stuff is cool. There's one thing that they could have included that would have been just so great because, you know, you know how isekai have this issue where sometimes they don't feel like it's an isekai, it feels more like a fantasy? This particular anime has that issue because Yuji doesn't really use any of his knowledge from the previous world or really ever reference his other world, except for in the beginning when it's like mentioned that, oh yeah, I, I was a uh, person. I guess right at the end, they have like a flashback to him at a computer. Um, had his like black company, which is companies that like are shitty to their employees, like the only one there working late at night. But that happens for like five seconds in the last episode and whatnot. Um, but yeah, his past is never referenced. But if they would have used this scene from the manga where he goes to this town that is burning firewood like a lot and uses his knowledge of, oh, uh, people are getting carbon monoxide poisoning because they're you know, burning wood in their houses and smoke is, you know, building up in there. And so they're dying because of that. Uh, and he tells them to open up their windows every so often and whatnot and then saves the town that way as well. Uh, they didn't do that. It would have been so simple to do. They could have cut out a little bit of other stuff from that episode that they did not need to do, that they dragged out. Speaking of dragging out, there is an entire episode of this, like, barely, like, three panels of a manga 
I think, or three pages of a manga, where there's like these assassins that at some point are targeting Yuji, and they pull an entire episode of these assassins following him and Yuji, like, dealing with them, even though it, like, could have been wrapped up in, like, a couple of scenes, and then they could have used the rest of that time to do other things, like what I was suggesting, right? But they didn't. So that's what I mean by dragging out unnecessary things. Like, some things just felt like they just dragged it out so far, and... Anyway, moving on to, I guess, all the skipped content talking about. There's more, a little more detail and whatnot. Um, but yeah, they skip a lot of the intro, like I said. Um, there's neat things where Yuzi uses his knowledge from our world. Um, <clears throat> various tamed monsters and things like that were basically cut out. Uh, various relationships with um, the guild people, like the receptionists and like the guild masters that he runs into, uh, people who like he builds a relationship with there. Basically everything from chapter 20 onward of the manga is like skipped until the ending bit, where it's like reference they go back to chapter 20 of the manga. And it's like, what? And like I said here at the bottom, the manga doesn't even cover how the anime ends yet. So it's like total spoilers for there. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> Would I recommend? No. I mean, if you're really bored and want something to watch, sure, go ahead and check it out. Uh, I feel like it definitely could have been planned better. It just was not. Like, if, if I wouldn't have wanted to see how they, take, how they ended it and what they did with it, I probably would have after the first couple of episodes where I saw them, like, skip a lot of intro content and do weird things with the music and stuff, I probably would have been like, yeah, I'm going to pass on this, uh, this anime this season. But I decided to, you know, keep watching uh, and all that. So I honestly would not recommend it. Cannot honestly say you should check this one out. And, uh, of course, on to that notion, second season, question mark? Um, given how the first one was planned out, how they executed it, how they went through it, uh, how they did things, um, I don't want one. And like I said, even if they do make one, like, where do they go from here? There was already this, like, world-ending thing that was going to happen in this climax. Um, there are some things that they skipped that would be backtracking, but would be, like, okay. I mean, it's not as grand as the final fight in this season would be, but there are some pretty cool things that affect, like, one or two towns. Actually, it's all just one town until this particular... Uh, part so far in the manga um it's all just been like centered around one little town one little group thing nothing's ever really the whole world is in peril or multiple towns are in peril or anything like that literally just one town at a time so you can see how it kind of goes from oh this is like a, a world ending thing this season to if they do make another season it's just going to be you know Oh, this is kind of downhill from here, right? But I don't know. That's my thoughts on the, the whole thing, whether or not I would personally check it out. So that's all there is to it, y'all. That, that's my thoughts on my isekai life. I gained a second character class and became the world's strongest sage. Definitely, I would recommend you to read the manga. It's much, much better. Um... So much more information and content and whatnot. It's just chef's kiss. Just chef's kiss. Anyway, I'm going to delete this presentation and go from there. So uh, it might be a week or two until we talk about the next anime because I'm pretty sure if we look at what's coming out tomorrow, tomorrow's episode 11 for Overlord. And then if we look at a couple others, for example, I think we're on episode 11 for everything else. Yeah. Everything else, I'm pretty sure, is going to take another two weeks before we start talking about them. But uh, this was it for Monday's anime. The third. All right. Anyway, 
Thank you all for watching. Hope this was a little bit informative. Uh, let me know what you think about this new uh, thing where I'm not just, you know, talking here with like a, uh, a projection screen with a thumbnail on it, you know. Do you actually like the PowerPoint presentation? Would you prefer it if I, you know, did what I normally do? Do you like these? Because they do take, you know, a while to go through and put my thoughts on an actual PowerPoint presentation as opposed to just rambling on for however long it takes me to normally. But yeah, let me what you think, everyone. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.